This is Memories of DeKalb, and we have a little bit different format today. Um, this time we have two, two guests, and our first guest, well, our main guest, is Scott Knapp, and he uh, is a DeKalb High School softball team coach, and he did this from 2002 until 2012 and he played all four years in high school. That's impressive. Very impressive, Scott. <laughs> and the lady on the left is Bree Weeks. Say hi to everybody, Bree. Hi. <laughs> and Bree was a starting pitcher, the num in fact, the number one pitcher <laughs> for all conference number one you were, mm -hmm. NACC pitcher. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important. <laughs> I hope you'll tell us a little bit about your history, Bree. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn this over to Bree Weeks and do our wonder. You're going to talk to us and do a wonderful interview along <laughs> with our guest, Scott Knapp. <laughs> so take it away, Bree. All right. Well, this time of the year is very special to me because this is about the same time that high school and college sports are going around, mainly baseball and softball. A lot of the major league players are starting to play. I know um, if my grandpa were still here today, he'd be sitting on he'd be sitting at the TV right now, yelling at an umpire for a Cubs game. <laughs> um, so this is around the same time that the softball and baseball seasons in high school and college would be playing. So I thought it'd be fun to have a well-known coach in the area come in and talk about, you know, kind of some fundamentals about the game and how it's evolved over the years for both sports and to talk about our histories. So as, as, as you mentioned, Jane, yes, I played all four years of high school softball at Central Noble. Um, and I was part of the first team to win our sectional championship for our school's history. I was the only senior. I was my senior year of high school we went, when we won the championship. I was very, very humbled and honored. Wow. And, <laughs> that's a huge, huge accomplishment, Bree. It is. Not many high school seniors that in that class in my school could say, I won my school's first ever sectional championship. So that... Weighed, it wasn't a heavy weight, but it was kind of a huge mantle on my on my shoulders when graduating high school. And it was also really special because as much as begrudgingly it was with my dad, who was our high school coach, um, you know, I got to share that victory with my dad. And um, I know us, I just now realize that Scott and my dad actually played on the same team together. Um, and you were a senior, am I yeah, correct? Yeah, I was a senior in my senior year, he was a sophomore. We both, mm -hmm. we both were starters that year, mm -hmm. and we had a pretty good team. We won the conference uh, tournament that year, the NCC conference tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, and like I say, we had a winning record. And we had a pretty solid team that year. Mm -hmm. So, would you say that's where your roots in baseball started, or like tell us where your roots um, began when you started playing the game? I just always wanted to play. I mean, my mom. We lived on a farm. My mom. In the wintertime, used to go out and play catch with me in the barn before Little League season started. Your mom did? My mom. She was more athletic than my dad. <laughs> and mom could catch. She had her own first baseman's mitt, and she used to play catch with me in the barn when the weather was bad. And um, That's I, the first I've ever heard that a mom yeah, would go out and do it, that with And she'd shoot baskets with me, too. She, and we had an indoor basketball court in the barn, and she would do that, too. But um, I started playing. My first team, I was on a... On a, Villa Community League when I was seven years old, mm -hmm. and then I played my little league in Cherubusco from ages eight to twelve, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then I we we moved over towards Albion, and I started playing in the Albion Youth Leagues, mm -hmm. and went through Half Pints, uh, Babe Ruth, you know, and then into high school. I played four years in high school. I started three of those four years, wow, at, in high school, and uh, we won two conference tournaments in that year. But like I say. Probably my funnest year was my senior year when your dad was on the team. You know, when we were on the, we were on the team for two years, but we mm -hmm. had a nice team that year. Awesome. <laughs> um, so would, would you say that the sport itself was important to you and your family growing up? Yeah. I 
I still love to watch baseball. I always try to take my family to at least one game a year. Mm -hmm. uh, professionally, I'm a Tiger fan, obviously, because of my hat. Nice. Uh, we try to make it somewhere. Um, I have a 14-year-old grandson that's playing high school baseball in Michigan, and that's always been sort of his best sport, and he's mm -hmm. showing me that that's still true. He's doing okay. Good. And he you know, he used to sit on, on my lap and watch Tiger games with me, and that's Aww. where he I think he got his love of the game because it's his favorite <laughs> sport. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, yeah, we, you know, we like to go to baseball games. Mm -hmm. So... Do you remember your first ever Major League Baseball game you went to? Oh, yeah. It was my Little League team. Uh, I was eight years old in Cherubusco. I played on the uh, Merchants team, which was a collaboration of different merchants sponsored our team. And mm -hmm. we went to see the Detroit Tigers and the Kansas City Royals. Nice. In Tiger Stadium. We played in left field. <laughs> or we sat in left field, and uh, mm -hmm. I I'll never forget that. That's awesome. Yep. See, my very first Major League Baseball game that I remember actually paying attention to very uh, well was I was 15 years old and my dad, my mom, my brother, and my one of my uncles and my even my grandpa went with us when he was much younger. We all went to St. Louis and we watched a Cardinals game. And I think it was the Cardinals against the Red Sox. So my brother was very excited about that. My brother is a true hard Red Sox fan. This is kind of funny because amongst, I think this happens amongst family members, there's not one set team, and somehow my family just is scattered all over the place. My grandfather and I, I'm sorry, Dad, you're going to probably not like me when I say this, but my grandpa and I shared the love of the Cubs. My uncle, Barry, was, is a Red, is, excuse me, a Cardinals fan, and my brother, Scott, is a Red Sox fan, while my dad is an Orioles fan. So it's just like... <laughs> Like, okay, there's no one set standard team that we all like, but if there's one thing we agreed on was Notre Dame softball. You know, probably <laughs> baseball is the only sport my whole family agrees on one team. So, you know, that, that, I feel fortunate that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, okay, I'm not, no. Is there, because whenever the Red Sox are playing the Cardinals and I can just hear those two bantering, I'm just like, oh my gosh, just watch the dang game. Good Lord, that's what we're here for, right? Um, so what made you want to become more involved as a coach instead of going on to say, did you, you know, most people when they want to play in high school, they either have one or two choices. They can either go on to play collegiate level or they can just go on to get their education and then just coach for their minor leagues and little leagues and things like that. What made you go that direction and become a coach rather than go to the collegiate level? I just fell into it. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a buddy that was coaching in the youth leagues his assistant coach couldn't coach anymore the rest of the season. Asked me to help him. Started doing it. It was girls about high school age, just be, and just before high school age. Mm -hmm. Then he got involved with the program at DeKalb. I went with him as a volunteer assistant. And then the next year, the varsity coach asked me to be up on the varsity with him. And I mm -hmm. just found a niche that I didn't think I would enjoy as much as I did. And I was, mm -hmm. like I said, I was there for ten years over three different varsity coaches. Mm -hmm. I was an assistant all 10 years on the J varsity. Four years I coached the JV. Mm -hmm. um, we had a, I was very fortunate to have, we were very fortunate. We had a very good program during the years I coached. Mm -hmm. We had some great talent, some great kids. And, mm -hmm. and I had some, you know, the four years I coached the JV, I had great, great kids and great, good teams. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then I decided uh, as my grandkids were getting a little older, I was missing time there. It was time to, uh, to not do that anymore. So, mm -hmm. But I just lucked into it. Mm. Yeah, that sounds a lot like the story with my dad. You know, my dad was the high school, my dad was a high school baseball coach by the time I started, you know, when I was very little. And then some of the girls who saw him coach, they begged and begged and begged him to come coach the softball team because the softball program was basically dead. Um, and that is when um, one of my friends, Lindsay Trula, was still playing high school ball. And then that's when he decided, you know what, I'll give it a try. He started to be an assistant coach, and then he then he was asked to take over. And then when I graduated, he he retired. Um, but he then decided, you know what, I, you know what, high school ball isn't just for me anymore. Then he started doing little league more with softball or baseball, depending on the area. I actually had the privilege of coaching with him on a on our A league youth team, and that was really fun that we both did that together. 
And I just realized, you know, how difficult it is to be a coach. So, um, so out of the co so you've obviously have seen and worked with a lot of coaches around this area and other areas in the Northeast Indiana. Like, are there certain ones and certain schools that stuck out to you over your career um, that you feel are when you hear the name of the school or whatever that they just like stick out in your mind? Oh yeah. Well, you you, you got to understand when you think that way. Usually the better programs is when the coach is going to be the one that turns up in your mind. And, mm -hmm. and some of the teams, first off, DeKalb County has been blessed in the softball department for many, many years. I'll agree to that, and I'm not even from here. I mean, here. DeKalb County used to have the best softball mm -hmm. in the state. I mean, mm -hmm. you had Eastside that was always very good. You had mm -hmm. Garrett that was very good. You had DeKalb that was very mm -hmm. good. And when you start talking about coaches – you know, I would say in softball, the first coach in DeKalb County that really started making it big was uh, De Denny Fig Dennis Fig Denny Fiegler at Garrett. Okay. And Denny really started, I think, I'm guessing he started that program and he built it up very strong. Mm -hmm. And then after he was gone, then Scott Bishop took it over and it's, and it's <laughs> always stayed strong with Bishop. Yep. And then at Eastside, if, if you have to look at what school in DeKalb County has had the most success, when you look even more recently, it has to be Eastside oh, yeah. because they had great success with Coach Aaron Willard. Mm -hmm. And now Willard's having success doing the baseball over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Which I found that kind of like, what? what well, you you're going you're gonna to find that we've got more of those kinds of coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, but so didn't Scott teach or coach baseball before? I have no idea, but... Uh, Fred Inniger at East Noble was a beast baseball coach when I was at high school. It was very successful, and they had a oh, great program. Okay, yeah, I remember that name. But Fred Inniger then started the pro girls softball program at DeKalb. But what he did that was even more instrumental and put him in the Hall of Fame for the high school softball is mm -hmm. uh, he started the coaches association for the state coaches association for girls softball. Oh, wow. And the reason why he was able to do that was he watched Bill Jones, who was DeKalb's baseball coach, mm -hmm. do that himself. Wow. And, and, he, and so actually the state associations have all started from coaches in our area that created it. That's and the amazing. coaches association wow. is important because that's who votes on all state teams. Mm -hmm. And for the all-star game where kids get to go play in Indianapolis at the all-star games. But, uh, but getting back to DeKalb County and then it, um, DeKalb has all, was always good in softball, and I believe Don Myers may have been the first coach at DeKalb, followed by Tom Blackburn, and then I think Rick Getz, and then of course um, Coach Steve Harp came in and took it to another level. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so yeah, you know, I think we've, Harp was when I was in high school. Yes, I think yep, yep. I, it's been a yep, lot of years. So and you, yeah, I always respect we've been Harp. blessed in DeKalb County for just unbelievable softball, and then when you look at baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, right now, Eastside has had some success in recent years in baseball. Um, went to state uh, title game a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Garrett had maybe one of the greatest players to ever come out of DeKalb, out, out of DeKalb County, and that was Greg Shippey. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Bill Jones, I, I know, has told people that Greg Shippey was the best baseball player that DeKalb ever played against at times because Greg Shippey was outstanding. Greg Shippey went on, he uh, got drafted by the Tigers, and he played in the Tigers organization for a number of years. I believe Greg was a catcher, mm -hmm. and Greg still lives in the area. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, uh, he played with, uh, for Tiger fans, we're going to talk about the 84 <laughs> championship team, but on that team, those were the guys Greg played with in the minors. That's a, he, wow, you know, wow. He played with Alan Trammell, who's in the Hall of Fame. He played with Lou Whitaker. He played with Lance Parrish. Uh -huh. And his coach in the minors was Jim Leland. And wow. Jim Leland was a great coach for in major leagues with uh, Pittsburgh. I think he did the Florida Marlins, but then he also finished his career very well with the Detroit Tigers. And so, um, and then you look at DeKalb. DeKalb has more players than any school that I, doing research for this, I can find that have either played in the majors or, mm -hmm. or, deep into the minors. Yep. I mean, DeKalb has... When There's you look, a rich history from yeah, both baseball I mean, and softball players. Brad Blevins here. played in the minors for a number of years. He pitched for the Cubs in the uh, 
uh, Crosstown Rivalry with the White Sox. <laughs> um, Jared Groove is a DeKalb graduate. He pitched for uh, Seattle Mariners. He was in the minors a, a long time and worked very hard to, to make it, to get to the uh, majors. Mm -hmm. And then you've had so many, you know, uh, Chris Forrest played at Louisville, was, I don't know if he was drafted. Dave Peterson was went to Western Michigan, was drafted by the Dodgers. I believe Todd Cobbs was drafted by the Dodgers. Uh, Cy Vogel was drafted by the Dodgers. A lot um, of Dodgers of uh, wanting um, DeKalb players. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, you know, like I say, DeKalb, you know, had some great players. And these were all guys that almost all played, the, if they didn't get, mm -hmm. go straight to uh, playing professional baseball, mm -hmm. most of them had Division One scholarships. And and there's a lot of the DeKalb mm -hmm. kids that had Division One scholarships. And nowadays, there's so many avenues for kids to be able to go to school. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many schools that have baseball. Half mm -hmm. the schools in our area, colleges in our area, didn't have baseball when Mm -hmm. When I was playing, and and um, yeah. so, but DeKalb's been uh, very uh, strong mm -hmm. in that area. So, DeKalb County played very has played very big in softball and baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think uh, Noble County followed behind you guys at least in the softball program because our program I don't think started until probably two thousand one, maybe two. Yeah, that now. So, but Noble County was stride for stride in baseball a lot oh, in a lot yes. of ways mm -hmm. because um, some of the some of the best baseball players have made it to the majors have come from um, Noble County. You had uh, uh, Ben Van Ryan, who played at East Noble, and he pitched for the Expos and the Dodgers in the majors. Um, now this isn't quite Noble County, but it's where I played my little league ball, and I played against him. Mm -hmm. A great pitcher, left-handed pitcher that come out of Cherubusco was Brent Gaff. Oh my god. Brent Gaff played in the <laughs> oh, he played for the Mets time. until he hurt his arm and he was mm -hmm. doing well with the Mets. But um, I played against him. He was a year or two older than me in Little League. I think it was one year older than me in Little League, and he, he mm -hmm. was fabulous then. Mm -hmm. Um and he played in the minors, I think, and he played division one college. The player that just – I never had a player when I played that just scared me, but when he, <laughs> Greg Fisher played at East Noble, oh, when he come to bat, he just scared me to death. My dad said and, Fisher was very and, intimidating. And Fisher, <laughs> Fisher and I are we're, – we're, we're friends now, and, and we uh, sometimes uh, run into each other at the lake and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, might have a 12-ounce uh, beverage together and joke around about uh, – uh, as mm. kids, but mm -hmm. uh, he was an outstanding. He played college in Texas, yeah, and wow. and he was an outstanding. Mm -hmm. And East Noble also had Jay Great went to IU on a on a baseball scholarship, Whoa. and your dad and I played against Jay, <laughs> and um, so and Central Noble had a pitcher that your dad probably remembers. He was he was ahead of me by about four or five years. His name was Lynn Sikafus, who was very good and played college baseball. And you got okay. Owen Willard right now mm -hmm. uh, from Eastside playing at PFW in Division One, mm -hmm. and so um, there's a there's a huge there's a Van Meter who I believe is just, I've it, got right here on my say, on my list. I can't remember where he got where he well, is now because he Norwell. was because he was playing for the Tin Caps in minor league, and then finally he got his chance to be drafted. Okay. I can't remember. Well, I think it was for the he Dodgers. was already drafted. He was playing for the Tin Caps because that that would have been with San Diego. Josh Van Meter from Norwell is currently in the major leagues, and he is playing in – he is a Milwaukee Brewer. I looked it up last night where he's at now. <laughs> uh, he's a Milwaukee Brewer, but he has – he's a utility infielder that gets plenty of playing time, mm -hmm. and he has played for the Reds and the Cubs. I think he might have played for the Diamondbacks at one time, mm -hmm. but now he's with the Milwaukee Brewers. That's and awesome. he was an NHC kid that um, – it was a all conference in basketball, but a great baseball player. Mm -hmm. And so there's – and Norwell also had a great pitcher about 12 years ago named Jared Parker who played for the A's mm -hmm. until he hurt his arm. Mm -hmm. And so this area has had – and there's Fort Wayne. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, I, did, yeah. I didn't research any of them. In fact, there's wow. one playing for the Tigers who, who was on TV last night mm -hmm. from Fort Wayne. But this area has always been steep in tradition in baseball. Fort Wayne's had its, its, its guys who created things – you know, in DeKalb County, I would say Bill Jones at DeKalb was a was a huge creator. But it goes back further. In the early 60s, somewhere in the 60s, there was a, 
guy, local guy named Corky Conrad, who I became acquainted with, became good friends with. He had a team of Stan Musial kids that he won the national Stan Musial title, like in 1962 or 63. Wow of pretty much local kids of Northeast Indiana. So um, we've always been blessed with a great tradition. You know, in Fort Wayne, you had the, uh, in the Women's Baseball League, you had the mm -hmm. Fort Wayne Daisies. Yeah. They were famous. Oh, that's what they were called? Okay. Yeah. And, um. Because I remember so, my grandpa would always tell me about the Women's National yeah. League because, you know, the men had to yeah. have and to serve was, their country. That and was then, from the movie A League of Your Own. And yep. that, that's what the Daisies were in. That's, well, that's, yeah, because that I, I actually league. had a question. They're like, are those, were, those were those team names real? I'm like, well, I know the South Bend yep. Blue Bells were real because I actually got to meet one of the catchers for the South Bend Blue Bells years and years ago. Yep. But as far as like the yep. peaches and all that, I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, the I think Daisies those were and, actual names in the movie. Oh, really? I, I think those were mostly, those teams were, 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 were legitimate names in the in the real world, but but we like I say we've had so many great players in baseball, and then that I think that helped fuel softball. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you look at softball, and some of the some of the great Cal softball players are daughters of some of the baseball some players of the baseball or players. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know Greg Shippey had a daughter that was pretty good at DeKalb, and Brad Blevins had three of them. Oh yes, and two of them were all state. <laughs> And two of them probably right. still hold home run records at DeKalb, mm. and they were twins. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Yeesh. you remember. You'll remember the twins. Oh boy! But, um, <laughs> but intimidating when they came up to bat. Oh my gosh! But I think I'm that. Like, okay, up, don't throw down a middle breeze. <laughs> and I always considered a lot of our softball program a coaching tree from Bill Jones. Oh really? Because you know, uh, Coach Harp, Coach under him, mm -hmm. he went to softball. Uh, Myself and another good coach, Keith Shoemaker, we started coaching. And everything we were taught by Coach Harp was from Coach Jones. Mm -hmm. And when you look at J Coach Jones's coaching tree, you know, you had him, you had Steve Harp, you had um, Murdoch, who coached at Eastside and DeKalb. Mm -hmm. You had uh, Steve Ternay, who coached uh, JV and was assistant in DeKalb in baseball and then was head coach in softball for a while. And then I always considered myself and Keith sort of protégés coming off that mm -hmm. tree because we were taught by people that were taught by Coach Jones. Right. So um, that's how you build tradition in a county and a, mm -hmm. and a program and, a, and a, maybe a certain school, or, but in, especially in the county is mm -hmm. people learn from, mm -hmm. from somebody who... Yeah. And that's the greatest thing somebody can do is teach others mm -hmm. and not just be a good coach. Right. You know, and win games. It's about... And like I say, and I think Bill Jones obviously is the biggest legend of all when we talk about mm -hmm. DeKalb County and maybe Northeast Indiana. Mm -hmm. I mean, him and Fred Inniger used to have some real, real, uh, in the late 70s and early 80s, there was a huge rivalry between East Noble and, and DeKalb. Really? And yes, East Noble was very good. And they were always right there if, you know, some years they'd beat the Cavs, some years they wouldn't, but they were always nipping each other's heels. They were both very good <laughs> programs. Um, I mean, just outstanding. And um, and incredible. and wow. so when I played, I I was fortunate enough a couple times in high school we beat East Noble. And to us, being Central Noble, being the small school of the county, oh, that yeah. was that was that was huge to us. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, yes. you know, and especially my senior year because I grew up all of the guys we beat my senior year. Because mm -hmm. I played a lot with these guys in Oville at mm -hmm. times, and so mm -hmm. I was friends with most of them. So that mm -hmm. was particularly special. But right. East Noble had a wonderful baseball program, mm -hmm. and um, and great tradition on its own. And that's mm -hmm. because of Fred Inniger. Yeah. And so, and uh, he's a legend in many ways. Yeah. Because he also coached varsity basketball. He coached mm -hmm. softball. You know, he was an assistant during some great mm -hmm. times in basketball over there, and then he had his great baseball teams. Mm -hmm. And now he's a local legend on the radio over there. So, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, I remember that. Um, you know, I do know growing up, softball always got a really, I don't want to call it a bad rap, but we had a reputation, um, unfortunately, for being kind of the lower end on the totem pole because – of the way we of the way our diamonds were set up, our rules and regulations weren't set to be as baseball was, because you know bases were a little farther away. Obviously, the size of the ball, how we pitch, um, but 
you know, kind of going on that, you know, there was a lot more safety, at least by the time I graduated, a lot more safety regulations were getting um, more enforced in both the sports. How do you feel about those um, relating now than they were back then? I mean, obviously, if you're going to get hit by a, by a pitch, you know, that's going to happen. But, you know, I can remember my dad always getting on my case if I do not have my face mask on because... Just let me tell you something. If you if you get a pitch that is being pitched to you at fifty plus miles an hour, that comes straight back at you, and you don't know where, to, and you are just like in shock, and you don't put your glove up, you're gonna get your teeth knocked out. And believe me, I've almost gotten, I've had some close calls of you being hit in the face. Well, the one it's thing scary I'll say, the one thing I'll say is in the Cal County, baseball and softball have always been equal because mm -hmm. I know all three cities, Butler. Um, Auburn and Garrett, they have their own separate associations that run their leagues, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's how I sort of got into this was being on um, the girls' softball league. I was mm -hmm. asked, I didn't have kids playing, so I was sort of a, a voice that didn't have a dog in the fight, so I was mm -hmm. asked. But it's always been pretty equal in DeKalb County. Now, as far as all the safety stuff, you know, I grew up in an era where you know, in baseball, kit, guys wore a cup, catchers wore catcher's gear, and that was it. You know, mm -hmm. if you were going to get hit somewhere, they'd say, well, you should have got your mitt up, you know. You know, I I, I grew up in the mm -hmm. uh, tough love era, you know. Yes. And so now in softball, when you're seeing the mask. Um, in high school, that's more enforced. In college, it's more of a choice. Right. Well, it's even a choice. But the reason why you're seeing that and the reason why it's important is, is, the bases are so much closer. You got baseball. Everything's, you know, the pitching mound is 60 feet, 6 inches in baseball. What is it in softball now? 40 30, feet. Uh, oh, and, 40? And, yeah, I think it's 40 feet. Or, yeah. And, they and, and the bases are only 60, 60 uh, feet apart mm -hmm. compared to 90 for baseball. So that condenses everything. And with these new bats, you wouldn't have this so much, but with the new bats that they're coming up, the balls come off the bats so hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, and so gosh. you, you got to have uh, – you got to have that safety equipment. Mm -hmm. So, I've never looked at it as the girls can't. The girls need more protection because they're girls. That's not the case. Thank you for that. Because <laughs> hey, I coach girls for more than ten years, and they, uh, you know, they can uh, hold their own with the boys. Uh, oh yeah. You know, in the dugout and out of the dugout. Okay, I used to have to. I had a team I had to talk to. My last year, I coached. I had talked to them about their language. They, the, the, they swore more than any boys' baseball team I'd ever been around. That's one thing my dad and, never, and, ever allowed, and, I, and, and yet and he I had didn't to, enforce it I had to tell them, like, girls. Dude, what are you doing? Girls, if an administrator hears you, I'm going to get in trouble. Be quiet, you know. <laughs> yep. And they laughed. They thought it was funny. But they were 17-1, and one and they were feeling good about themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, I, when you have I had more record, fun. You kind of have a little bit of a attitude and I understand that hey. I, I I used to do that too but you know if there's one thing I remember my dad telling me is like uh, you know you can come off of a win but you got to go into every game as a blank slate because if you go in with you know a cocky attitude you're going to make mistakes and boy was that a huge lesson learned for me at least my sophomore year of high school and that was team was that. another team that is an example of what we always try to create was a true team these girls they were you know fifth. 14 to 16 different personalities range, ranging from ages of 16 to 17. Oh, and Lord. they were one on the field. I mm -hmm. mean, they yes. blended together. They were one. They, And then, uh, you know. They Respected were, each well, other. Well, they were horrible when we started. Oh, they boy. couldn't play catch. Oh, boy. And and I I kept them over and kept them over after practice. We, we would practice late to get their fielding down and mm -hmm. they become actually a, a excellent fielding team, but they could always hit. Mm -hmm. And so they were winning games and mm -hmm. they started getting cocky. And I had a, the varsity basketball coach at the time come in and says, heard you got a really good JV team, Scott. And I said, I don't know. We haven't played enough games yet. So where'd you hear that? He goes, from them. And, <laughs> and I told him, I, I said, yeah, I said, so I told him, I said, girls, mm. you might be good. I don't know yet. I said, Mm -hmm. Well, we win some more games before we're telling everybody we're good. And then, yeah. And then they mm -hmm. went and beat a really good team, and they were still unbeaten. And because they went 17 0 and lost their last game, a five inning game, which, you know, you either count or you don't. I counted, but it's not mm -hmm. supposed to legally. But they, uh, <laughs> you and my dad. but they, uh, legally, I mean, they, 
you know, they won 17 games in a row. And after they won the number nine, they played Eastside, which is a pretty good team. I said, okay, mm-hmm. all right, you, you, you can go mouth off now and tell people you're good. <laughs> you're right, I'm good with it now. I said, but yeah. you, you've proved it to me. Yeah. But, uh, but they were fun. And, you know, they were a little loosey goosey. And sometimes I had to reel them in because they were a little too loosey, you know? Mm-hmm. But, but boy, were they fun. Mm-hmm. And, but they always wanted me to tell them I, they were better than the team I had that was 20 and one. And I would, uh, ne- I would never really quit tell, I would never tell them that because mm-hmm. the 21 team was a little bit more complete than this team was. But boy, this team had heart and played. I, <laughs> it, it was a great year to be Those my, of you girls watching, now it, you heard it from your former It was coach. a great year to mm-hmm. in my coaching career yeah. with that JV team because they were so much fun. Mm-hmm. And they didn't, they didn't think they'd be all that good, but mm-hmm. they became very good. And it was fun. Yeah, I, I know how that feels. As my senior year of high school, I was the only senior. We had barely, we had maybe four or five juniors, you know, Mackenzie, Darby, Kennedy, um, all of those, all of our travel league girls who were my best teammates at the time. And then we had a number of freshmen come in who were both pitchers and catchers. And I I emphasize young team and I emphasize that because we had a fairly young, scrappy team and it did not start off well for us in the season. And Losing one of our coaches, um, for those of you who remember Lindsay Trula, she was one of our JV coaches, and all the girls, including myself, enjoyed having her as a coach, and unfortunately, we lost her in a car accident um, uh, before the season started, and everybody on the team just felt like we had already lost. And my dad and I came together, and I was like, you know what, we can't let this happen. We have to see if we can't edit. So we, so I got, so he and I got the team together and we said, let's do, let's get this season going and we do it for her. And it obviously worked because, you know, she always wanted to win a sectional championship under my dad, didn't get the chance. And I got to do that vicariously. And that was the best victory of a game I remember having, um, you know, we had three games in, uh, where were we at? Westview. I can't remember what team we were playing for the last game because it's been so long, but I had pitched the first five innings. Then Haley Duncan, who was under me, finished out the game, and I was literally on the edge of my seat. And I was just like, oh, please, please strike her out. And when that la- and when the umpire called strike three and the sheer cheer over that crowd, I was just like, oh, my gosh. And I got on my knees, and I was just like, Oh my gosh! Well, see, you're bringing up another point that really has gotten um, <laughs> lost in the shuffle. Is is girls softball in high school? Mm-hmm. Good teams. They bring huge crowds. Oh yeah. And I'll I'll use uh, the years I coached. The biggest rival we had was uh, Columbia City. Really? And yeah, because Columbia City. they were hmm. they were very good. My first two years of being on the staff, we were fifty seven and five. And Columbia City, it was always us in Columbia City going for the conference title. Mm-hmm. Now, back then, we didn't have daylight savings the way it is now. Mm-hmm. And we would play them under the lights, either in Columbia City or here. Mm-hmm. And, and it would be a 6 o'clock or 6.30 game. Oh, wow. And the, the place would be full, like it was a oh, sectional wow. final. Mm-hmm. But what, was, what we always got a kick out of was we could look at the crowd and stand in on sidelines, and your dad was one of these. All these other coaches would – cut their practices short so that they could all come watch us in Columbia City play. Mm-hmm. I can remember, I remember looking that. over and seeing seeing uh, Bishop from Garrett, your dad there, uh, Tony Harrell from East Noble. Uh, there were just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we used to get a charge out of how many of the coaches would mm-hmm. make sure that their practice was over so they could come over and watch. Because yeah. it was, uh, because you always knew, and the NEC had good softball. And we had years in softball in this area. When we went to state finals in 2004, mm-hmm. um, Eastside was in, at, at their state finals. Belmont, out of our conference, was at their state finals. And we were at our state finals, all in different classes. Oh, wow. So not only but was our conference really good, but the area was very good, too. Mm-hmm. So that was always fun to see. But but you, there's some really, you know, big crowds and loud crowds. And, oh, yes. Um, that always makes it a little bit more fun. But, you know, as an athlete and as a coach, I always focused on the field and uh, 
you know, didn't pay attention. As an assistant, we could pay attention a little bit more to what's going on in the stands. But mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, you focus on the field and you yeah. get caught up in all the emotion of it. it being it's, a huge it's, crowd. it's not easy, too, let me tell you. Um, and I think it's a lot more harder as a player when you have a family member who is on the coaching staff. See, I think our really good teams, they mm -hmm. love that. They they thrived on on the Columbia City game mm -hmm. or the East Side. East Side was always another one. They were very mm -hmm. good when we were very good early, mm -hmm. and those were huge huge mm -hmm. crowds. Some of my favorite games that we played when I was in in the high school games uh, definitely were against you guys. DeKalb was always because you know we had Taylor Grayless on there because she w I remember her saying to me she's like every time you pitch I was always waiting for that one. That one pitch where I could just smack back at you, and I'm like, well, guess what? You're not going to get a well, smack back at me. Well, the Grayless girls, though, they had it. <laughs> there was a family connection there because yeah. their their uh, their half sister mm -hmm. played on your team, yeah, and then McKenzie. we had two of the Grayless sisters, and mm -hmm. so um, and, uh, and yeah, I know their, and I know their definitely. parents, you know, mm -hmm. from going to school there, and so there was always a little extra fun with the, the mm -hmm. grayless girls would always get a little extra fired up to yes. play each other. Yes, and I always got a little extra fired up when we played Garrett because Scott Bishop was my pitching coach during the off season. So it was always kind of interesting to think like, okay, he knows how I pitch, but do, is he going to tell him? So I had to, so my dad and I were just thinking like, does he, is he going to tell his players how I do it? But I found out that he doesn't do that. So that was kind of a, but he's going to tell them to he's gonna, look for yeah. or maybe outside or look for high or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But he's, you know, he, he, as good a coach as he is, he's not going to know exactly what pitch you were going to throw. And exactly. Stuff. That and, was the uh, strategy my dad but, and I had. You know, he, like, would, he knows how I pitch, but he doesn't know what I'm going to throw. Right. And so, uh, and like I say, who knows how many girls Bishop has taught pitching lessons to. Micah Bodie, Courtney Holiday. It's a, uh, that it's Micah amazing. Bodie would always scared the living daylights out of me. Micah Bodie was on my, oh my list of one of the, uh, one of the that best girl. Characters. I think eventually um, hit seventy miles an hour pitching. For those of you who don't know, fun fact: the fastest softball pitch ever recorded on record was seventy miles an hour, and that was from a girl in Japan. Hence why every four years or so, however often Summer Olympics, depending on where they're at, that's just why we have baseball and softball, which is something that I find a little annoying that it's not played more often. But depending on where you're playing, are they going to build a stadium? Do they even have baseball in their country or whatever? So it's always fun when the Olympics are back here in the States because you know there's going to be a stadium somewhere. You know, now there was, there was several. Micah was very good. Uh, mm -hmm. it, but there were several more pitchers. There were several there were a couple pitchers came out of this area that were much better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Micah was outstanding because she stuck at us uh, more than once. Uh, oh, yeah. Lauren Ward was very, very good at East Side. Mm -hmm. I never got a chance to see uh, Missy Chaya pitch over there, but she was very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an Allison Edgar that was very good over there. I remember But Allison. also, uh, you know, and DeKalb had some good ones. You had... Um, uh, uh, Chrissy Real, who was good over the years, but no one ever in this area ever touched the quality of pitcher Kristen Shoemaker was. Yes. And Kristen pitched at Western Michigan for three years. She was their number one pitcher for two years. I um, that name. And Kristen, mm -hmm. in three years, had just under 800 strikeouts in high school. That's awesome. And she went to Division One. Mm -hmm. We we were talking to a Notre Dame coach once at a clinic, and my her dad, who a good friend of mine, and a coach, a coach with, we were take, had taken one of our pitchers up there, and he told her, her, him mm -hmm. his name, and, she, and he goes, "My daughter pitches for Western and Notre Dame's mm -hmm. coach, who's still there now, and yeah. just became the all-time winningest coach." Goes, "Oh, oh my God!" She goes, "Because Kristen had beaten Notre Dame." Mm -hmm. She goes, "I missed that one. I, I never saw. I, you know, I never recruited her. I missed mm -hmm. it because you know." But Kristen was, um, and probably the other one in this area. As far as in northern Indiana, it was uh, Amy Kendall from Northrop. She was just before Chris, and they crossed for one year, I think. She went to Kentucky and pitched and was very, very good. Those mm -hmm. were probably the top pitchers ever to come out of this area. Mm -hmm. But there were so many very good ones. You know, I had the Ward girl, the Shia girl. You had Micah Bodie. I mean, there were just mm -hmm. too many to name. They were great yeah. pitchers. Yeah. All right, so we're slowly running out of time. So the last thing I want to um, ask you is if you have any advice for young 
young kids in high school, both boys and girls, who want to strive to be in the sport, what's your biggest piece of advice? Well, are you talking about the parent wants them to play or the kid wants to play? The kid. If the kid wants to play oh. is learn every little fundamental possible. We, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that always made the years we I was part of the DeKalb coaching staff, and it was before me, and this came from Coach Jones on to Coach Harp, was we did our fundamentals. Pre in this, when the season began, we spent two weeks in the gym, no matter how good the weather was, doing nothing but fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Because that's where you could teach fundamentals. And if you can teach little girls how to field the ball right, throw the ball right, um, half the girls that would get to high school, we'd have to teach them how to re-throw the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say, you throw like girls. Well, uh, it's only because where girls release it. Yes. You know, we would just teach them, don't release it till the ball passes your ear. Right. And then everybody's throwing the same. That's but why it's called a Fundamentals, shot. fundamentals, because once we got outside, mm -hmm. your, your, your teaching's done. You mm -hmm. lost them on, on the fundamentals. And so yeah. we did nothing for two weeks but stay inside and work on fundamentals and, mm -hmm. and have fun. My gosh, it's not life or death if they don't make get a college scholarship or something. It's all about having fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I tell my grandson. I want you to have fun. Mm -hmm. And if he calls me, like last night he called me and told me, well, he's, he ran a track meet too. He got fourth in one oh, event, wow. and he got last in the other one. I said, well, did you have fun? He goes, yeah. I go, did you run good on that when you got last? He goes, yeah, I had a PR. I said, great, proud of you. Have fun. It's all about fun. <laughs> and maybe some families getting together and doing stuff together outside. That's mm -hmm. what I think is important. <laughs> Oh, very great, very great advice. Um, Scott, thank you so much for coming. It's just, it's been great to reminisce about this. And I got to learn more about, you know, the history and, you know, the the rich the richness that the sport has here in DeKalb County and get to hear a little bit more about, you know, the fundamentals in coaching and softball and baseball. I mean, I know it's a huge sport here, but it's a it's imp it's an important sport. I mean, that's and why it's, it's called America's in the Game. Noble County. I mean, there were so many good players, and LaGrange County had so many good things. Mm -hmm. Our Northeast Indiana was just very blessed, and mm -hmm. so we're lucky mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much again. Jane, you want to sign us off? Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, we, uh, you've been watching Memories of DeKalb, and we are recording from the Willinar Genealogy Center, mm -hmm. which is a service of the Eckhart Public Library. This is Memories of DeKalb, which has been extremely exciting <laughs> and very informative. Mm -hmm. And Memories of DeKalb is all about DeKalb County. And you're supposed to listen to you're supposed to listen to the program mm -hmm. and say, oh, this reminds me of something that happened mm -hmm. when I was a child, when mm -hmm. I was a girl or a boy, mm -hmm. and bring a big smile to your face mm -hmm. and warm your heart. So I want to thank Bree and Ann Weeks mm -hmm. and Scott Knapp for coming on the show. It's been a real honor. And, and I hope you're going to return again. <laughs> um, uh, just don't ask me to do a pitching demonstration, please. No? <laughs> <laughs> I have not thrown a ball in years. And plus, I'd probably end up tearing a ligament in my arm probably now. But Eh, who knows? Oh, well, then we w don't want you to do that. No, can't do that. But you can come back and talk to us. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> I will anyway. <laughs> well, again, I want to thank you for my wonderful guests, Bree Weeks and Scott Knapp. And I want to thank you all for watching. And we will see you uh, soon. We will be on the third Thursday of every month. And uh, we're going to have an exciting program next month. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to watch and uh, we hope you're going to have a wonderful evening and uh, say goodbye to everybody please. Bye. 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 <laughs>